So I work in disability support, so I do a lot of home care. So I work one-on-one -on -one with clients, uh, do stuff around the home, do stuff in the community. Uh, with a couple of clients, it's more personal care sort of stuff. So it's you know, taking care of them, the more personal side of disability support. So it's hard work and it's a work that's in a way vocation because you're really committed to the people you're looking after, but it's very low paid, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's not a, it's not a high paid industry. We're uh, working on the Shads Award, so um, it's, it's tough to get by, you know. I love my job and I love working in it, but I'm not putting away a lot of money every month into savings. I'm not, I'm just ticking by, really. So are you having to make sacrifices because of that, in terms of what you choose to spend your money on, yeah. where you can and can't go, what you do and do, uh, don't do outside of work? Yeah, there's always that thought when um, working in a casualised industry, there's always that thought that I have to make sure that I've got savings. I can't go out and make flashy spendings. I can't invest in a new car. Like I'm working with my little 2007 Corolla that I've been, that's been puttering away for a long time. And I can't, if that goes down, then I'm in a lot of trouble. You know, there's just... There's no avenue for me to save money. It's also always making sure that I can get those dollars. And it's really important too, because you're working in an industry where we need people who are committed to the work, who want to be there, who want to look after our most vulnerable. I, do you at times think, well, is it really worth it? Yeah, it's tough, it's tough. If it wasn't a job that I loved, I'd, I'd struggle staying in the industry just because it's so individualized. So it's like, I don't have any connection. The issue with other, like, industries is that they they work as part of a team working in disability when it's all one-on-one -on -one, it's very hard to form those connections which is great with the union movement that i know that there's others workers out there who are in the same sort of predicament and that i have a community out there how would a 3.25 percent pay rise impact your life what sort of difference would it make to you and uh and your work it'd be it'd be massive it'd be just just that little bit of peace of mind that there's that extra extra money coming into, into my pocket every week that I can put away should anything happen, should an accident at work happen, should something happen to my car. There's just that peace of mind knowing that there's a little bit of a safety net there, that I'm not really in trouble. I think that, you know, all we can do really is fight for better conditions in our industry. We've spent too long putting up with, with not being recognised and being left behind and with bending together to say enough is enough. How hard is it to live on the current wage that you receive and, and with prices and costs the way they are? I don't think that I'm alone in saying that uh, I live week to week on my hospitality, salary, uh, my hospitality wages. I think that in saying that I represent a majority of the workforce, um, we are already significantly underpaid in my opinion. We're one of the lowest paid industries in the country. Uh, and like I said, it's week to week. So wage stagnation means a cut to that really it means that with rapidly augmenting uh, cost of living we're getting left behind and it's becoming increasingly difficult to do things like travel to and from work uh, you know afford things like medication and, and medical services and it's yeah it's, it's already incredibly challenging it's only going to get worse without a pay rise so every week you're having to make those calculations about what you can and can't afford whether you need to maybe go to the dentist or something are these the sorts of decisions you have to make week to week absolutely that's right I mean we have to we're already on such precarious tight budgets that I Again, those essential services like going to the dentist for necessary dental work, going and seeing a doctor, seeking uh, mental health services, things like that, that uh, you know, everybody needs and needs to have free access to. So I, I'm a casual McDonald's worker. Um, I'm a manager there, but I'm a under 21, so I'm a pretty low paid manager there. Um, just normal shift work, that's my sort of job. Everything that needs to be done on a daily basis. And working in that role is getting increasingly more difficult because wages are frozen? Yeah, it, it's in, I'm already paid at a very low rate, which makes it hard enough. Um, and, and in, you know, with wages being froze, it, it affects me immediately because I, you know, prices are going up for everything and I'm already being paid low enough that I can't afford to go without an increase. What sort of things are you having to give up or forego because, you know, there's just not enough money? Oh, you know, I, I'm not too hard off, but the, the real issue for me is that I can't afford petrol a lot of the time, you know, petrol prices are going up, my wage isn't, and I can't afford petrol to get to work, to, you know, to drive my brothers around, to drive my family around. I can't afford to do that when I'm not paid the right amount. Does it make you feel like work's hardly worth it when you can't afford to live? Um, you know, there's weeks where I'm spending as much on petrol as I am for a full shift. It's a full shift gone, or a full shift or two, you know, eight hours a day that I'm having to spend on petrol because there's, there's no other option, I have no other way to get to work. You must see a lot of uh, other people you work with, young people in a similar situation. Yeah, I think I think that's that's my main issue is that I work with a lot of, you know, 
a lot of immigrants I work with, a lot of people that are coming here on very low incomes that can't afford to put themselves through university to have a house, to pay their bills. You know, there's workers that can't come to shifts because they physically can't get there. And that's my issue is that I, you know, without a wage increase, these people don't have a job. How are they supposed to come out of, you know, a place where they're not earning much if they can't afford to get to work in the first place? If you could sit down with Josh Frydenberg for a minute and tell him what you really thought, what would you say to him? I think take a hard look at the people that you're supposed to be representing. You know, the people you're supposed to be representing are the people that aren't earning much and he's done nothing for us. It always seems like it's the same sort of people earning the same sort that get advantages, that get more and more from the government and we're sort of left behind because we're not directly in their view.